Good evening and welcome to Capital Online TV News. My name is Anita Nderu and these are the stories making headlines. Members of Parliament, both elected and nominated to the Senate and National Assembly, were on Thursday sworn into office. In an exercise that began in the morning and went well into the afternoon, the MPs one by one took their oaths of office. The senators then went on to vote in Kenneth Lusaka as their speaker, whose first act on the job was to defer the vote for his deputy after all those who'd expressed interest withdrew. So in accordance with uh, standing order number seven, the results for the fresh election, which we, the second ballot which we have just held are as follows. The votes cast were 67. There were no spoiled votes. Lusaka, Kenneth, Makelo, 42 votes. Maalim Farah, 25 votes. Therefore, Honorable Senators, pass one to standing order number seven, paragraph four. I now declare Lusaka, Kenneth, Makelo. to be duly elected as a Speaker of the Senate. I am humbled and overwhelmed by the great honor and privilege you have bestowed upon me by electing me as your Speaker of the Second Senate of the Republic of Kenya under the 2010 Constitution. I therefore accept with humility and pledge that I shall perform to my uttermost ability the constitutional responsibilities and the duties of the Office of the Speaker of the Senate for the next five years with diligence and appropriate tact. The National Assembly thereafter took their vote with majority of the opposition legislators making good on their threat to boycott in a refusal to recognize President Uhuru Kenyatta's authority. The immigration electorate on Thursday launched the electronic passport. This is ahead of the December 2018 target set by East African Community Member States. Presiding over the launch, Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi said the rollout, which would take effect from midnight on Thursday, is a demonstration of President Uhuru Kenyatta's commitment to ensure the digitization of identification information for all citizens. Um, the e-passport that we launched today uh, puts us in a new league that we are going to have a secure, reliable, trackable document for movement and for travel across East Africa, but also, uh, of course, across the world. Now is the time for us to reflect on some of the things we need to do. And, and as the Ministry of Interior, we are focusing on synchronization of our identification documents and ensuring that all information and data on identification, all information and data on documents on each uh, citizen can be assessed uh, uh, very easily as we move forward. The other day when we were insisting on having every child have a UPI in our Kenyan school system, I was very impressed by uh, the work that has been done by our registration of parts. Our departments are coming together and you can see that we are stepping onto a modern digital platform of managing identification and information uh, on our citizens across the board. This is what we would like to see as government. This is what our president has promised the citizens of this country, and this is what we want to achieve. Matiangi warned immigration staff against irregular issuance of the passports, saying the integrity of the new passport will be protected at all costs. Some of the old habits and challenges still dog us. And I want to take advantage of this opportunity to caution you that we want to be even much more serious than we have been in the past in handling our identification documents. We must be candid and say that we have faced challenges in the past when our passport has been in the hands of people who should not have it. And to demonstrate to you how serious we are, some 12 of your colleagues are not with you today. They have had to leave. And we will maintain that seriousness as we move forward. So far, 1,800 applications have been received for the new passports, with the production capacity set at 2,000 per day. Lastly, county governments have given striking nurses until September the 8th to return to work or face the sack. 
Following a consultative meeting held on Thursday morning, the Council of Governors explained that the draft CBA is unrealistic and has called on the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to carry out a re-evaluation on which new terms can be negotiated. The Council has assured the nurses who return to work before the set deadline that they will face no victimization, but says it will, moving forward, engage nurses on a contract basis. The Council hereby puts all the striking nurses on notice to return to work immediately and not later than 8th September 2017. For those who will have returned to work, there will be no victimization of the nurses who participated in the strike. Counties will withdraw all show cause letters issued before this date. All nurses who will not have returned to work by the above stipulated date will stand sacked. Thereafter, the counties will advertise the positions of the nurses. The nurses' strike, which the governors have consistently called illegal, has gone on for months, having begun well before there was a change of guard in the counties following the August 8th general election. And that's all we had for you today. For the latest on these and other stories, log on to www.capitalaffirm.co.ke. I'm Anita Nderu.